this is Jesse Bourne and this video is called everything I learned while making the sundial puzzle box so uh, I'm going to actually read you the list of notes I've been taking um, and these are just things that I would write down um, at different points usually in the morning of, of days when I'm working on making the sundial prototype um, and these were just things that helped me to be able to uh, accomplish such a massive project and build such a complex puzzle box um, when I was so scattered and felt like I was I was doing so many things at once and this box was never going to get done. So hopefully you guys find these things interesting. So I just took these notes. I would just whenever I felt kind of inspired or felt like I I realized something important, I would write it down. And I'm just going to read through these notes here and um, maybe some of them will stick for, for you guys as well and um, maybe you'll get something out of it. So the first thing I've got is laser focus and precision. So what I meant by that was um, I, I was watching our laser cut um, some wood and if you move the wood too close to the laser um, the cone of the laser, the laser is actually through a lens. The light is focused into a cone and it's focused into this small little stream and then it gets unfocused into a cone-like shape and it no longer cuts. So the wood needs to be the right distance from the laser to get a clear, precise line. And so you can't be too deep into a project or too far away from a project you have to be focused in at that right point and you can't be too scattered. You have to do one thing at a time, make it really good, make it precise, do a good job on that one piece, move on to the next piece. All right, I said, the main product needs to move forward. People need boxes. Our marketing is reaching way more people than it needs to. Make the hard decisions to niche down and focus. So sometimes when I'm running this business, I feel like I haven't made a YouTube video in a long time or I haven't posted on Instagram in months um, or my newsletter hasn't been sent in a long time. And those are all important things, but at the same time, I've got obligations to fill, I've got orders to fill, and um, you know, I can't feel like my business is being crippled because I'm not taking the opportunity of marketing or somebody else is getting my money you know i've just got to forget about that i've just got to build a box because that at the end of the day people pay me to build boxes and ship them to them so that's what i've got to do and that's got to be the main thing every day i if i want to do marketing and i want to do other periphery stuff like filming youtube videos and making podcasts and uh, different stuff well then I've got to work that in around my day but I can't I can't worry about working eight hours or ten hours a day making boxes because that's, that's really what I'm supposed to be doing um, haste makes waste let's work methodically let's be precise with our work make the system reliable and repeatable now that's pretty important. I think that's a big takeaway that I've learned on this sundial puzzle is that um, if the system is reliable and repeatable, then there's basically no mistakes. You know, the mistake is an anomaly. But if there's no system and um, it's up to user chance, you know, like or user skill. And sometimes I'm going to make a bad part and sometimes I'm going to cut too much or too little. We have to have a system that does the same thing every single time for each part. Now, not all of my systems are completely skill free. Um, you know, there is a certain amount of skill involved in making a sundial puzzle. But um, I really try to reach for the highest quality I can and usually that involves making systems and jigs and processes that do all the precise work for me. 
Um, business is all about quality. If you can improve a customer's life, you have a sale. It's all about innovating and raising the quality. The customer wants the best quality for a lower cost. How can we improve the product today? Um, it's important as I'm building these sundial puzzles to take a step back and figure out each day um, what's the lowest quality step in the assembling process or the building process here that I could improve with a small change um, that may, may only take two minutes on Fusion to just adjust something slightly or maybe I could uh, adjust my setup, my assembly station so that I was doing a better job or it was easier to use the tools so that I was so that I would be more likely to spend the proper time doing whatever I need to do to make the puzzle as good as it can possibly be. It's important to take a step back and not just build puzzles every day but to figure out how you can improve puzzles every day. <clears throat> Super important. Our job is to create reliable, repeatable processes. If you can teach, if I can teach my, my team, the people who are working for me, which it's incredible right now, there's, there's around seven people who are involved in building one sundial puzzle right now, which is crazy. I haven't, I haven't introduced all those people on camera, but we'll get to that in a later episode. So, but if I can teach them to improve their, their process and to create a process that we will be able to use on the next box then we'll already have a system for the next box and we'll be able to improve that system on the next box and and it's just like building tools and filling your toolbox with each new puzzle you make and the, and the quality of the product is going to go way up exponentially um Everyone in the shop needs to serve, oh, sorry. Everything in the shop needs to serve a purpose or get eliminated. So, um, the clutter in a workshop can creep up and you can be blind to things in your shop that don't belong and then other people can walk in and they can be like, oh, what's that over there? And you're like, uh, you know, I use that sometimes, you know, that, that, that has to stay here. But actually, like, the laser precision, the focus, I need to get rid of everything that doesn't help me make a sundial puzzle, and I need to store it somewhere else or get rid of it just so that I can focus, I can walk into the shop and I'm not distracted and I'm not hindered by all that other stuff. That's, a, that's an important takeaway, and that's something that I should work on every single day. Um, never have the same problem twice. This happens so often when building puzzles. Um, sometimes I'll get the sundial top put on and I'll have to glue and I'll glue that part on, but then there'll be a problem somewhere and I'll have to drill in and fix it. You know, something's binding in the box, a moving part isn't moving quite right. I'll do some surgery, I'll drill in there, I'll fix the part, um, you know, I'll wax it up, I'll, uh, I'll do whatever I have to do, but the important part is that I take a step back and I say, okay, I had a big problem here which cost me a lot of time, a lot of specialty work from me to fix it for this specific box, but I never want to have this problem again. And sometimes it's, it's incredibly easy to go back and make a, a change, make a part like 0.2 inches shorter or something, and all of a sudden it, it helps that next step to not have the, you know, the sawdust bind up the moving part or whatever. It helps the tolerance be better. You know, I've done this countless times in this box and um, it's important that you never have the same problem twice you always figure out a way how it's gonna work every single time from this moment forward super important I'm not really I could go much deeper on that and explain it more but hopefully um, everybody can get what I'm saying and if you have a question you can ask me about it 
Um, what gets measured gets managed. Um, I heard that from the Business of Machining podcast. Uh, purge the in-between stuff in the shop <clears throat> that is not in current use. So again, um, get rid of the stuff that you're not using currently. Even if it's useful to you, you don't want it to cloud the laser focus you want to have in that box. So try to get rid of the equipment and the tools that you're not using for that specific production. <clears throat> That's important. Run the simulation. Don't wait until you have the perfect simulation. You never will. Make progress in a slow way. At the same time, improve the process. This is the best way to do business. So even if you can't just sit back and theorize how you're going to build the best puzzle, you have to practice building the best puzzle and you have to experiment with new ideas because, um, you know, it's just like that, the story of the students in a film, in a photography class where the students who spent the, the two weeks trying to take the one perfect shot and only taking one photo were not as good as the students who took a hundred photos but just took their best one without a lot of planning. Inevitably, they ended up taking a better photo in their hundred photos that they just, that they just snapped off the cuff than the students who spent the whole two weeks taking that one photo. <clears throat> and that's because they just went out and did it and they practiced, they came back, they thought about it. You know, you, you can't just theorize and become the best puzzle box maker. You have to practice, theorize, learn. You have to revolve in that cycle in order to get better. Try something new, remove something old. Um, you know, keep innovating. Don't just think that the process is the best it can be. It can always be better. The process is never perfect. There can always be improvement in your processes. If you have consistent, if you have consistent way of making small improvements every day, you will not experience the anxiety of missed opportunity since your business is undeniably moving forward. So what I meant by that is that if you're improving the way you make boxes each day, you don't have to stop your production and, you know, get, get a headache because you're, you're worried that your business isn't going to be making enough money. If you're improving the quality of your product every day, you don't have to worry about your business failing. Um, the customer will be able to see all the the changes that have taken place in the box, how much better you are than you were the year before. If you make improvements and uh, if you make the product better. Um, make a checklist. Save your decision making ability by making a checklist that records it for you. So when I was making the sundial puzzle, one of the first puzzles I sent out actually had um, a spare tool that I left in a different compartment that I forgot to take out because I kept uh, setting the box up, um, making sure it was working. I would go back, I would check your compartment. I didn't have a clear checklist on how to <clears throat> reset a sundial puzzle box and make sure everything was working. So I was just constantly going back and forth between different compartments and checking to make sure everything worked. And I f forgot that I left a tool in one compartment, an extra tool. And so this guy was like, why do I have two tools? And so, but once, once I had that, I made a 11 step checklist for resetting the sundial, getting it ready to ship. And, um, that's saved me a ton of time and it allows my brain actually to be able to come up with solutions for other problems because I don't have to worry about 
where I am and setting setting up a sundial puzzle, I can just go through the checklist and it doesn't require a whole lot of cognitive space to uh, to finish up a puzzle anymore. So that was a huge thing and I want to implement checklists more into my puzzle making because they're phenomenal. So that's pretty much all the notes I have. Um, thanks for watching this video. Let me know what your best note was and uh, let me know if you have questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again later. Goodbye.